Just lift your hands and worship him. There's no one like you. Thank you, God. We worship you. We worship you. God, speak afresh in this place. Grant that we hear you. In your majestic and mighty name we do pray. Have your way. Amen. Amen. Well, I tell you, we don't have church up in here. I'm ready to get a benediction. I'm done. I'm done. I'm toast. Stick a fork in me. I'm done. I'm not done. I don't have enough. I'm going, I'm going to take about 15 minutes to do what I had planned uh, just because it's the first Sunday of the month and I want to set you up for where I'm going. But I, I really, I, I feel like the Holy Ghost had his way. And uh, the, between the, the prayers of the righteous uh, lifted up in here from our, our senior deacon and our elder, lead elder there, and the singing and the praying and the new singer over here. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> this has been a marvelous way to start the year off. Amen. Amen. I've been trying to tell Elder Martin, I said, the only person holding you back is you. Because I tell you, if the Holy Spirit moving, just let the Lord move. And so I guess she got the message for 2023. Let's, let's give God a praise. <laughs> What a great way, what a great way. Let's, let's do this real quick. I want to just raise up something that has been on my mind, in my spirit. I've been thinking about it. And I'm going to do this two different ways. So you're going to hear one version of it now, a second version later. Both have the same implication because I'm using it metaphorically today. I'm lifting up a metaphor, and I want you to get the metaphor because all this sermon is going to be metaphorical because it's going to apply directly to your life. As you listen to me speak, I want you to apply it to your life. Don't listen to just what the Scripture says. The Scripture becomes the basis by which you can see your life. That's what's called the hermeneutical implication. That is, what is the interpretation and the implication of it for my life? How is it applicable to me? And so I want you to listen for that this morning. Because I believe God, the only reason you're here and the only reason you're listening online now is God has something he wants to share with you. And the only reason I still feel compelled to say it is because somebody needs to hear it this moment. That's the only reason I feel it. Because we, we've had enough. I, I would stop. But someone needs to hear this. Someone needs to hear this this moment. Let's, let's look at it. 2 Kings chapter 6. And the beginning, it's, it's a long passage. I'm not going to try and read all of it. But uh, 2 Kings chapter 6, I'm going to skip down verse, verse 11. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was greatly troubled by this thing, and he called his servants and said to them, will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, none, my Lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet who is in Israel tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. So he said, go and see where he is that I might send and get him. And it was told him saying, surely he is in Dothan. Therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there, and they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, Do not fear. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. Hallelujah. 
for the next few moments. I want to talk from this theme, let it go. You may take your seats all over the sanctuary. Let it go. Elder, this is for you. Because if one actually uses the words, let it go, it comes, and most of you know it in common parlance, especially you parents of younger children, and those of you who are with children now, I promise you it will still be strong by the time your baby's born. Most of you know it from the movie Frozen. In the movie Frozen, that's where it comes, where Elsa gets the singing. Let it go, let it go. In Frozen there, Queen Elsa of Arendelle for many years has been hiding her magical talents and abilities. She has the ability to control and create snow and ice because she accidentally hurt her younger sister, Princess Anna. And at the time of the singing of the song, she gets to the place where she just doesn't care anymore. And she lets it go. I, sometimes we, we have to get, and I told you this is double talk here. You got to get to the place where you recognize that some stuff you got to let go. What you need to realize is that sometimes God wants to use you, but you're so busy doing your thing or worry about what somebody think about what you're doing that you won't let it go. You won't release yourself to be used. You're the biggest holdback you got. Nobody holding you. The only chains on you. You're like the elephant standing in place with a rope on his ankle, knowing full well if he had any sense, he could pull that rope and everybody around him. But instead, he's been put into submission and he's held by a tiny rope. After a while, you can put a string there and he still stands in the same place. At some point, you got to figure out who you are in God. At some point, you got to let it go. But there's a second side of this. Because for Elijah, Elijah has to crank it up a knot. He just, he, he got that, he got the juice. Uh, he got the juice. He, did, he didn't even have to take him to Tupac. He got the juice. Went over some of your head. He got the juice, but, 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 but now he's got somebody next to him that doesn't know that he is who he is and all he does is see what's in front of him. So there's a second part of this let it go thing and that is the there may be some things in you you got to let go or even metaphorically some people around you because either they get in with the plan, get in where they fit in, or they don't fit in at all. Yeah, see, see, there's a, while, while, while most of you might know it from Frozen, there is a secondary part of this that comes from a poem by E.E. E. Cummings. And E.E. E. Cummings, uh, an American poet, painter, SS, author, uh, playwright, he wrote approximately 2,900 poems, and many of them are really important essays. But Cummings also wrote a poem called Let It Go. Here's what he says. Let it go. The smashed word broken, open vow, or the oath cracked length wise, let it go, was sworn to be let go. Let them go, the truthful liars, and the false fair friends, and the both and neithers, you must let them go. They were born to go. Let all go. The big, small, middling, big, tall, bigger, really, and the biggest and all things. Let all go, dear. So comes love. 
okay, I know. That, that's kind of written in a way you might not get. Let me do it another way. What he urges you to do is get rid of negative people. That's what a truthful liar is and a false fair friend. He says they were born to be let go. They ain't got no business being in your life. I'm holding two things in tension. I'm holding the release of let it go. That is of your inner anointing along with the letting go of anything that would hinder you from doing the will of God. Oh, I just got deep already. I, real quick, I told you I was only going to be 15 minutes. Watch this. What's interesting about this thing here in reference to the text, because there is a scripture here. We got to talk about that, right? In reference to the text, here it is. The prophet, the man of God, has been interceding on behalf of the people of God. And the anointing on his life allows him now to hear the conversations of a king and opponent and foe of the people of God. And he's able to warn God's people how to avoid trouble. And every time he speaks, the trap that the enemy set is foiled. Can I tell you all this? You don't even realize how many traps in 2022 God took you around. You are so busy looking at the things that happened that you forgot to thank God for what he didn't let happen. See that time you were trying to text and you started drifting? You, don't, you forgot to thank God that he didn't let you run off the road. That time when somebody came over in your lane and nearly hit you, you forgot that God kept you and protected you. That time when you thought you were all done, but God picked you. you see, sometimes we miss what God keeps us from as being a blessing. Oh, man. just talking about the text. And the frustration grew in the Syrian king, so he wanted to kill the messenger. Because if you can't stop what's happening, then what's happening will continue to happen. So he wants to kill the messenger. So he sends out an army. Now, you're going to get one man, but you send a whole army. One man, they, 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 they no SWAT team or anybody. They ain't got a couple of rangers around there, but y'all are so scared. You sent a whole army to get one man. And the person that is his attendant, that is standing by his side, wakes up out of sleep, walks outside, and he's confronted by a military army waiting to take the person that he serves. Now, you got to know this. As goes the leader, so too go those closest to the leader. So don't think he is just saying, Massa, we sick. No, what he's actually saying is, if you in trouble, I'm in trouble. If they get you, they're not going to leave me. So we, we are in trouble right now. So he looks out and he sees that. And, and, and you know, can I, can I just clue you in on something? In truth, everything the man of God does afterwards by striking those soldiers, he could have did without him. He did not have to pray for the servant. Can I say this to y'all? You know what? 
God wants to bless you in ways you cannot anticipate. And it's not because you're so great, so good, so whatever. It is because God's grace is just that good. Got a secret to tell you. I learned this a long time ago. People ask, ask me, why are you humble? I said, because I learned the secret. He doesn't need me. I need him. He can get along fine without me. I need him. And the moment you learn that God's blessings to you are not because you deserve them, but because his mercy and his grace has been extended to you, that's when you learn how to be humble. That's when nobody has to pump you up to praise God or to give thanks. You do it because you realize God deserves all the honor and all the glory and all of the praise. I, I, I got got two more minutes. Watch this, watch. I got this, I got a lot of doing two minutes. Watch this. So so, when he walks over to the servant, he the servant says to him, Pastor, what we gonna do? And you can only imagine if you walked out and saw an army and you walk back in the house, you are probably not going to say, uh, Sir, uh, excuse me, uh, we have a problem. No, you you gonna come back in. And you're probably going to be paying. Uh, look. Uh, that's, that's the real deal. That's the real deal. He's probably having a full-on panic attack. So I, give, I want to give you three, three things to let go of. Because right now we servants. We ain't the prophet. We the servants. So let's be in, there, in that spot. Three things to let go of. Number one, number one is the fear of a foe. The fear of a foe. I don't care what the foe is. In this case, it's an army surrounding them. I don't care if it's a health challenge. Listen to me. I told you it's metaphorical, so jump on with me. I don't care if it's a health challenge. I don't care if it's a financial burden. I don't care if you worry about your children, your grandchildren, or your great-grandchildren. I don't care if you worry about education. I don't care if you worry about paying a bill. I don't care if you worry about opening up a door, getting a job done. I don't care if you worry about how we're going to make it. The first thing you've got to get rid of is the fear of it. Because as long as you're afraid of it, you don't know how to pray about it. You can't stand against that which you're running from. And, and, uh, in order not to, uh, not to alarm you too much uh, with this sermon, but I want to I help you here. When he looks up, he sees an army surrounding them. And he thinks about uh, what he has. They got an army, and it's me and you. I mean, I got a butter knife, but, you know, <laughs> this ain't no sword here. And I, I ain't never, look, they haven't invented a machine gun yet. I, I go get them for you, but. Here, can I give you a nugget to take home? Never measure strength in the natural. See, you go look at your bank account and say, that ain't gonna work. You, you look at your resources and you say, that ain't gonna work. I, I, will, I wish I could testify right now. I'm not gonna do it, but I wish I could testify. Let, let, I have seen God do miracles 
while looking at the bank. I've, been, I've seen God say, don't worry about that. I got this. And unexpectedly, from nowhere, something comes to make up the difference between what I have and what God is about to do you. I can't measure my strength based on me in the natural because always in the midst of the natural is the supernatural. And what I need to say is, where is God in this matter? I know what the doctor said, but where is God? I know what the bank says, but where is God? I know what the school said, but where is God? I know what the psychologist said, but where is God? Because when God gets in the equation, the measurements are skewed in your favor. The, the, the second thing, the second thing, oh, I'm getting way past that. The second thing you gotta, gotta uh, let go of is the fear of failure. The fear of failure. Um, because if you're looking up, and let's give it a small army. Say they, say they say they call it army 50, 50. That's not a fair fight. 50 against one, five against one's not fair. But 50? But notice something. The first thing the prophet says to him is do not be afraid, do not fear. Why does he tell him that? Because the moment you start functioning in fear, you dismiss your faith to the background. I know I'm preaching today. The moment you start functioning in fear, you dismiss your faith from the battleground. The moment you start functioning in fear, you have commanded your faith to be recessed and decreased. I don't care what the foe may be in front of you. You have got to know that you're worrying about whether or not it's going to work. That's what the word failure means. Whether or not I'm going to have enough. Whether or not things are going to work out. Your worry about that causes you an emotional crisis. And some of you have been going on emotional roller coasters over nothing too long. Everything can't send you tripping, baby. Can, can I, can I, can I kick it? Somebody ought to say, yes, you can. Okay. I got, I got to get, I got to close, I got to close. Watch this, watch this. Here, 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 let me drop a dime on you. Never let circumstances dictate response. Notice, notice, when, when he comes in there, the prophet is in complete emotional control. See, I don't need a pilot when he hits a wind shear to start hollering and screaming, oh my God. No, I need you to go back to your training and see what you need to shift and move to level this plane. I don't need you cussing. I don't need you fussing. I don't even want you to be praying right now. I want you to concentrate on what you know with a level head. I'll do the praying. You do the flying. I got this. I got my part. I can guarantee you I'll pray you through. Now keep your head in the game. I don't want you speaking in tongues. You speak aviation. I got the tongue over here. I've been
been speaking over 60 years. I got the talk. I got the talk. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It's too often when we see negative circumstances that we get emotional. We lose it. We go jump up on tables and <laughs> I go do it. I go do our props. I we all jump up on tables, run around the house, you know, be all scared. Again. Come on. We'll sigh a moment. Take a deep breath. I really think what, it, what, what the prophet wanted to say was, come here, cuz, pump your brakes. We got this. Why, do, why am I telling somebody that? Because the next thing you go through in 2023, it will not ruin you if you can hold your peace and let the Lord work it out. Okay. Last one, and I am done. I promise I'm done. I'm way over time. Watch this. Watch this. And the last one is don't fear or have a fear of the future. You see, the only reason he's scared is when he sees those men, he thinks that means death. See, I'm walking down somebody's alley now. See, the only reason the diagnosis scares you is because when you heard that word, you said death. You didn't hear me? The, the only thing, reason you're upset is you are afraid of what the future holds as you face the foe that is in front of you. And what I'm trying to tell you right now, you've got to let fear of the future go. Whew. Listen, listen. See, if you don't let it go, then you'll be stuck in an emotional rut. You'll allow it to rip the heart of you out. Tear your spirit down. Make you think that it won't work out. Make you think that now is forever. It'll never get any better than right now. I'm in a bad situation. Nobody understands what I'm going through. I'm the only one going through what I'm going through. None of my friends are going through what I'm going through. None of the other servants are in this position right here. If I hadn't been working with this guy, I wouldn't be in this position right now. But now it looks like since I chose to work with this person, I'm about to get killed too. My future doesn't look bright. Shut up! Never let challenges determine your resolve. Ah, good God Almighty. See, it, it, you know, I could, this could be a whole nother sermon, but I just got to get a couple of things out. I've got to run, y'all. Look, don't you dare let a challenge determine your resolve. I don't care what challenges you have in 2023. Don't let it mess with your head. Don't let it make you think that God has abandoned you or that the Lord is not going to work it out or that God is not going to keep his promise that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. Never let your challenges determine your resolve in God. And I'm done with this last little nugget. This is just a nugget. I'm just, I'm just dropping dimes just right here, right here, right here. Do you notice what he prayed for? He didn't pray, Lord, fix him, give him a new heart, give him a new mind. He didn't pray about He didn't even pray about his fear, really. No, he, he didn't say nothing about that. You know what he prayed for? He said, Lord, open up his eyes because he needs revelation. I decree and declare over your life that 2023 will be a year of revelation. 
that God is going to open up your eyes, that you're going to see where God is working at. That's why you're going to leave here saying, I'm never going to let a crisis diminish the revelation that God has given me. I won't let anything diminish what God is saying. God is going to give me a vision to see where he is moving at in this present moment. And when I see what God is doing, I'm going to rejoice even before the full manifestation because God won't give me a revelation where he's not getting ready to bring manifestation. And when the manifestation comes, I shall celebrate both the revelation and divine manifestation as God is going to let me let it go. Every head bowed, every eye closed. God, we love you. We thank you. Thank you for those who heard this word. Thank you for encouraging hearts and minds. Help us to let it go. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Some of us will be letting go and releasing gifts anointings and possibilities. Some of us will be letting go of former things that kept us down. But whatever we need to get to the next level, help us to let it go. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, bless God. Maybe there's somebody here today that would desire to be a part of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to welcome you today to our family here. If you're here in the sanctuary right now and you know you want to partner with us here at Shiloh, I want to welcome you today to come and be a part of our fellowship. If you're online right now, I'm going to ask that you would uh, simply email me or you can write me here at this place. I want you to let me know that God is doing something in you. Give me a call. If you're here in the sanctuary and you want to be a part of this fellowship, just lift up your hands. One of our ushers will come to you right now and we will prepare you to be a part of this family. Hallelujah. God bless you. I love each one of you. Come on, just put your hands together and bless God. <laughs> 